Today is a very special day, a day to recognize and to give thanks to God for the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, who through the, the change collected in their little mite boxes, the sewing and donating of quilts, the visits to the homebound, and countless other works of service, heed God's call to transform lives through the message of Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our epistle lesson, Philippians chapter 3, specifically focusing in on verses 12 through 14. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ, lose 10 pounds in seven days. Lose 20 pounds in 30 days, guaranteed. How many times have you turned on the television to see some slim and trim man or woman promising us those six-pack abs? Can you lose 10 pounds in seven days? Or 20 pounds in 30 days? Is it even healthy to lose that amount of weight in such a short time? Yeah, there are all kinds of fitness gurus on our televisions and other places that promise to transform our bodies, to transform us into a new us. But you've got to wonder, can it really work? Well, I'm not here to inspire you on to physical fitness, but I am here to inspire you on to spiritual fitness. And that's really what St. Paul is talking about in our text. He's talking about spiritual fitness. And there's one true diet plan that actually works. One true plan that has the power to change lives. And that plan is Jesus Christ. His plan is the one that can actually live up to its promise to transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body. Not just for a short time, not even for a lifetime, but for all eternity. Jesus Christ is God's transformation plan that leads to eternal life. And that plan begins now, the Apostle Paul wrote, in, in the, wrote to the Philippians, Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider what I, that I have made it my own, but, I, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now when St. Paul uses the words, I press on, he is really talking about a certain stick to -itiveness. His goal is to make it his own because Jesus Christ first made him his own. And the good news is that just as our Lord has taken hold of Paul, so too does he take hold of us and make us his own. Jesus did this by taking on human flesh and living in the trouble and the pain of human existence. He drank the cup of suffering. He prayed in the garden, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. His was a diet of suffering. Sacrificing his body and dying on the cross. So that we might receive the forgiveness of sins. Yet death could not hold our Lord. St. Paul describes it this way. Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In Christ all will be made alive. Christ is the first fruits. Then, when he comes, 
those who belong to him. You see, just as Christ took hold of us, because he took hold of us, our future is certain. We will live forever. And so, because of our God's goodness to us, his grace to us, in faith we press on to make it our own because Christ has already made us his own through the forgiveness of sin. And that, by the way, my friends, is our diet on this spiritual, phys- spiritual fitness plan. It's a diet of forgiveness and life. It's a diet that brings spiritual growth and wholeness. Now, as in all diets, there is the temptation to cheat. How many of us have started a diet only to cheat a few days later? Sometimes that piece of chocolate cake or that piece of candy is just too irresistible. Just as there is temptation to cheat on our diets, our physical diets, so there is the temptation to cheat on our spiritual diets. There are the worries, the distractions, the disagreements that come up in everyday life. Some seem larger, others seem smaller. In the end, each temptation challenges our faith in God. We see the effects of these temptations in our lives and in the lives of those around us. There is the temptation of discouragement. It's easy to, get, to become discouraged when life hands us a lot, a lot of trouble. When that happens, we sometimes wonder what good it is to be a Christian when God lets stuff like this uh, happen anyway. Or we pray, and God doesn't give us the answers that we want. We get sick. Our loved one still dies. And we still can't make ends meet. The feeling of discouragement and frustration creeps in. It lies to us, telling us that God really doesn't care about us. The difficult part is learning to trust in trust God in everything, even trouble, even pain, and even death. The challenge is not to take matters into our own hands, but to let God do what God knows is best for us. The challenge is knowing and trusting that in all things, in all things, the Bible says, God works for the good of those who love him. It may not seem like it at the time, hearing the diagnosis of cancer, watching our loved ones slowly drift away from Alzheimer's, or receiving that dreaded phone call that your loved one was killed in a car accident. These things happen, and we wonder what good could God possibly be doing through this? You know, more times than I can count on my hands, in my 13 plus years of being a pastor, I've gone to make a visit on someone in the hospital, and the other patient in the room, in the bed right next to the person I was visiting, has asked me to pray with them and for them as well. You see, sometimes the Lord places us in positions where we can, through our suffering or through the suffering of a loved one, bring his comfort and peace to another person. And so whether it be temptation or opportunity, in sickness or in health, we, like St. Paul, forget what lies behind, and we strain forward to what lies ahead, pressing on toward the glory for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What matters is not whether we are successful in our plans or whether we fail. What really, truly matters is that Jesus Christ was successful and that we trust in him. That is the diet at work in our lives. Trusting in Jesus 
trusting that he is who he said he was and that he in has indeed accomplished the task for which he came. Forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. This is the kind of diet that transforms lives. It is the kind of diet that is guaranteed to work. It will cause you to lose weight, not physical weight, mind you, but the weight and the burden of your sin. And this is the kind of diet that we are now called upon to share with the whole world so that all may come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus transforms lives. He transforms the lives of those he loves. He transforms the lives of those who are loved by him. He has transformed your life and my life so that we can feed his message of love to other people. And he transforms the lives of those in the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in their mission to assist each woman of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in affirming her relationship with the triune God so that she is enabled to use her gifts in ministry to the people of the world. All of this happens through the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. His diet is one filled with grace and mercy, forgiveness and love, hope and witness. His is the diet that transforms lives in time and for all eternity. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.